Hardly any term in photography has caused as much misunderstanding as HDR. This is simply because the term HDR has been repeatedly redefined over time and used to describe different things and outputs that have not necessarily always been aesthetically pleasing. In this video, I want to clear up those misunderstandings, explain the various meanings and contexts and show why I think that HDR will play an increasingly important role in the future and will soon become indispensable in our photography workflows. The brightness difference between a sunny midday scene and a moonless night is approximately 24 stops of dynamic range. That may not sound like much, but remember that f-stops represent exponential brightness ratios. This means a sunny day is about 2 to the power of 24 times brighter than a moonless night. That's 17 million times brighter. What our eyes accomplish is extraordinary. They cover the entire dynamic range of the reality we perceive. In contrast, even the best cameras can only capture a fraction of the dynamic range of the real world. Camera sensors today manage about 14 to 15 stops of dynamic range. You might think, well, the difference between 14 and 24 stops is just 10 stops. But remember, stops are exponential and 2 to the power of 10 is 1024. This means the dynamic range of reality is at least thousand times larger than even a very good camera sensor. This of course is a rough illustration. By adjusting exposure time, ISO and aperture, you define a window through which your camera captures a slice of the immense dynamic range of the reality. However, this slice captured by the camera is still way larger than what most of our monitors can display. Our output devices, they have a significantly lower dynamic range than a RAW file. That's why RAW files need to be edited before we can show them on the monitor. When editing, you compress the RAW file so that its image data fits in the much smaller dynamic range of the monitor. Typically, you will raise the black levels and you will lower the highlights, making the dark areas brighter and the bright areas darker. This transforms a larger input contrast range of the RAW file into the much smaller contrast range of the monitor. So what does HDR have to do with all of this? To understand this, we need to clarify the term HDR. HDR stands for high dynamic range as opposed to SDR, which means standard dynamic range. In the early 2010s, attempts to use HDR unfortunately gave the term a very bad reputation. Back then, software came up that could combine differently exposed and already edited JPEG or TIFF files into single high contrast images. Since monitors at that time couldn't display those properly, the images were run through so-called tone mapping processes, often resulting in absurd edits that created looks that no aesthetically inclined person wanted to see. In reality, this had little to nothing to do with true HDR, but the term suffered a blow because of it. We could only really speak of true HDR when Adobe finally introduced the ability to combine different exposed RAW files into a single RAW file with extended dynamic range in Lightroom. This feature called Merge to HDR generates a true HDR RAW file in DNG format from a series of RAW exposures. This retains all editing capabilities, including white balance adjustments, while providing the extended dynamic range of the individual RAW files in a single image. However, even this broader RAW file must be compressed for output, even more than a single RAW file. Monitors still have the same relatively limited dynamic range. But this finally raises the key question. Wouldn't it be great if we could better represent reality 
by increasing the dynamic range of our output devices. For this, we need displays capable of producing brighter whites. The issue of the black levels was resolved years ago with OLED panels, which can display true blacks by completely turning off pixels. To increase maximum brightness, however, we need not only bright monitors, but also ones with finer intermediate levels. Those are referred to as HDR displays. And such a HDR capability has been standard in TVs for years now. However, the HDR adoption for computers is the way slower, even though those are the essential devices for creating HDR content. For a long time, HDR was limited to expensive studio monitors, mainly used for video productions. Today, HDR displays are found in newer monitors, like the latest MacBook Pros or some Windows laptops, especially those with OLED displays. For standalone monitors, HDR options are still limited. Adding to the confusion, not all HDR labeled monitors generally display a high dynamic range. HDR-ready devices can process HDR input signals, but their displays are bad and not suited for image editing. If you want to buy an HDR display, look out for HDR10 compatibility, or better yet, a VESA Display HDR 1000 or 1400 certification, which ensures brightness levels of 1000 respectively 1400 nits, among other factors. Such certified monitors are listed on VESA's website down below in the show notes. But even with a high quality HDR monitor, editing HDR images still involves compression, both for the HDR merged RAW files, but also for single RAW files. Even single RAW files still exceed the dynamic range of an HDR monitor. The result on such a display however, is much closer to reality and visually more appealing. For my HDR demonstration now, you'll of course need a screen that supports HDR. The best way would be via YouTube's HDR feature on a compatible TV or laptop. But remember to enable HDR in the display settings of your operating system as well. Well, let's check out the difference between SDR and HDR in Lightroom. This is an image just edited in SDR. And this is the same image edited in HDR. So if you don't see a significant wow moment now, then you are probably not on a proper HDR display or you didn't activate HDR in the display settings in your operating system. On an HDR setup, you should now see how the brightness in the sky comes up and this is really, really impressive. So this is another image. This is one that I took years ago in Colombia and I edited it this way back in the time and now I just switched on the HDR output in Lightroom and this is the result. And I find this is quite impressive. Let's uh, go back once again to the other one and I show you how to do it. I just go to develop and turn on HDR here and the lights go on. Isn't that cool? Let's see another example. They just turned on the HDR feature in Lightroom and then it looks like this. And everything looks way more plastic, way more three-dimensional uh, when you turn on that HDR feature, given of course that you have an HDR display. This also works with some landscapes. Here we have a very dramatic sky, but in the SDR version, in direct comparison, it looks quite pale. This is really impressive and brings up so much more reality in your images compared to the SDR versions. All such scenes with high contrast, they really take profit of the HDR output. You can see the difference when going back and forth also in the histogram. 
On the SDR image, you have the SDR dynamic range, but if you switch to HDR, you see the old histogram will be in this part and everything that has been clipped before, it is in this part. Every single of those vertical lines here represents one stop. This means you can in maximum increase your dynamic range by four stops, but of course our monitors might be limited. If you go to develop, Lightroom will show you the additional headroom that your monitor can display and the rest will be black. This means that this part here cannot be represented by this monitor. Such scenes are really perfect for the HDR output because they have those bright lights that should really shine and they just don't in SDR. So turn on HDR, add it a little bit differently. I will show you how to do that in a second and take profit of this higher dynamic range that your monitor offers. This kind of Sceneries you might know are really hard to shoot. So if I reset this, you see that the original image was shot very dark in order to preserve the highlights in this area here. And that's what I said before in my presentation that you really, really have to take care to not overexpose always when you shoot because overexposing will clip the highlights and then you won't get them back and it will make things worse than in HDR because they will still be clipped and you won't be able to make a nice HDR image. Uh, but in this case here, I didn't clip them. This is the SDR edit and then this is the HDR edit. And it helps so much to bring out that huge contrast range that we have in this scenery and it makes the things look so much better. This is the Elb Philharmonic Orchestra House in Hamburg where I live. And this is the HDR version where you can really see those reflections on the windows pop out and it's amazing to have those options now directly in Lightroom. And this one is again SDR and I will show you just how I do a simple HDR edit starting from this. So first of all, this image is not really clipping here. You can see when you move your mouse over the little triangle, there is not much of clipping going on. If I turn on HDR, only those areas will come up a little bit because now the clipping point will be more to the right. That makes those areas being shown while before they had been clipped. To bring the highlights up, the most easy thing is to lower the exposure a little bit and then increase the whites. This will really start using the headroom that you gained by increasing the dynamic range into the HDR range here. I find Adobe has done a tremendous job in implementing this in Lightroom. It's so easy to understand what's going on. You see your histogram, this is the HDR histogram and here you have the additional headroom now for HDR and you can do your edits like that. Once you start editing your images in HDR, you need to consider that most people will still view them in SDR. And for example, if you put them on your own website and people are watching them with Google Chrome, this will work because Chrome will display them correctly and other browsers will follow and other image viewers will follow. But you also need to make sure the downward compatibility because there will be many people that will be watching your images on an SDR display. And that's why Adobe implemented kind of a backward compatibility feature here where you can say, okay, preview on an SDR display. So you can see by default, it will look like this on an SDR display. But then you have also those sliders here to change the way that your image will be displayed in SDR as opposed to HDR on the HDR display. You see, it's really important to distinguish between input HDR which is created via exposure bracketing and Lightroom's merge to HDR and output HDR. Input HDR is often less critical than people think. Properly exposed single RAW files in 99% of all cases will deliver sufficient dynamic range even for HDR output. I can stress it enough, the most important thing is accurate exposure, where you don't clip the highlights but also don't waste headroom. With this, you're ready for both SDR and HDR editing.
If you have an HDR monitor, I encourage you to experiment with output HDR. Lightroom makes it very simple as you learned from my demonstration. HDR may still be a bit niche, but as more and more screens come with HDR and software improves, in my opinion, it will soon become the standard. It is crucial, however, that operating systems and software developers catch up. As of now, and this is end of 2024, HDR files exported from Lightroom can hardly be displayed as HDR in any image viewing program. The only option that already works reliably today is Google Chrome. Chrome correctly displays those HDR images exported from Lightroom as HDR on an HDR monitor. There is an urgent need to improvement here, but I assume that the software industry will catch up shortly. In the video sector, by the way, there's already significantly more software that play HDR videos correctly on an HDR display. And by the way, most current smartphones already capture photos and videos in HDR. You'll know that your phone supports HDR if images in your photo gallery appear significantly more vibrant compared to when you, for example, share them via a messenger app. Once the image is in the messenger, it often looks less brilliant. This happens because the messenger displays and transmits the image only in SDR, while your photo gallery shows it in HDR. Often also the image initially appears in SDR in the photo viewer before the phone switches to HDR, making it seem as if the lights suddenly turn on. I am really convinced that HDR will become the new standard, as always with such emerging technologies. Competing standards and formats may slow down the process, but with the advancements in display technology, it makes definitely no sense to remain limited by the SDR dynamic range established over 50 years ago. Personally, I wouldn't buy a monitor or laptop today that isn't HDR capable. Now I hope I was able to share something new with you today. Maybe you learned something and if so, I'd appreciate if you return the favor and subscribe to my channel and left a like. It motivates me and helps increase the visibility of my channel too. And by the way, if you discover an image viewer that can correctly display HDR photos exported from Lightroom, please share it in the comments. Otherwise, I see you on timelapse.com. My next video will be about how to make true HDR time lapses with LR time lapse. Subscribe to get notified.